time for the bell. How many options will you sell? Fire up your platform, get ready to enter. But first, let's get the mindset centered. Hey, hey, let's go. Uh, we're not here to gamble, we're here to trade. We follow the plan, that's how we get paid. Testing, trading, have success. Find what works for you and forget the rest. Stats and probabilities is what we're about. Time to dismiss greed and doubt. Focus on the process, not the money. And the profits will flow like honey. Power our live, let's start the show. Come on, trade hackers, get ready to go. Zero day options, time to make bank. Get locked and loaded, then be ready to plank. Hey. Hey everyone, welcome to today's Power Hour live stream. Today is Tuesday, October 15th, my mother's birthday. Happy 71st birthday, mom. I know you always listen in on Power Hour. Uh, hope everybody's doing well. S&P bleeding down 39, NASDAQ down 268, Russell up 14, Russell the strongest of the bunch, Dow down 284, Gold up a little over half percent, silver up one and a half percent, notes and bonds green, 10 year yield down two percent, oil down four. Interesting tension in the Middle East, and oil's down four percent. Natty gas flat, uh, soybeans, corn, and wheat were all red, euro slightly red, pound slightly green, Bitcoin up one and a half percent, VIX. Steadily climbing all day, sitting at 20.56. I did a 1DTE, got stopped out of it. Uh, did some BIX. My normal BIX are up about 1,300 as we speak. So if we can just hang in there, could be a nice BIC day, but a lot of time left. Uh, I'm up about the same on my price action bix. I've got this one lot left. A little five to ten point bounce would do this thing wonders. Uh, I did not do any day trading, although I looked back at the charts and it looked like there's some really nice opportunities. I was dealing with Tradier had some issues. Uh, it was difficult to even get orders filled within the first 15 minutes after the bell. So I was dealing with that. But uh, I did put on a new one, two. Today, a new one three, a new two three. I've got a two three on from yesterday that's up about five percent, a two four that is up tiny. My three four is up about five percent. My five seven, I've got an order to close half at 20%. It's currently up about 15. My six seven, I closed half at 20%. It's currently up about 24. And I just put on a little e-wooga and regular time wooga, both in NDX, just one lot each, just uh, just small, just to put it on because it is Tuesday, but not uh, doesn't feel like great price action for a tiny range here, but we'll see. Uh, I think that's about it. Chad, how's your day? Yeah, only one TLC trade for me today. Um, put it on this morning after I got on live streaming. And uh, live stream got a, a, this morning got a really nice NVIDIA downside volume runner. Um, so good uh, profit there. And yeah, just one. Um, this price action, it just really hit. It was kind of off centered at one point. Um, and I hit sixty percent out, sixty percent and out before this um, next. This I guess this drop that started happening uh, over the last hour. So I haven't had anything on just because premiums were so low, and it looked like it was going to continue trending downward. So I didn't put on a new one. So I am in the. The only thing I have on then is the um, 2025 Wooga, which is sitting about dead center right now. And currently up uh, 12%. So 
light day of trading. Yeah. I mean, it's just been kind of bleeding all day. I mean, I had that one flush, and then it's just been kind of bouncing and grinded. It kind of popped back up to the expected move line, which I have at about 58.45. Yeah, and... Tried to get back above that a few times, and then just kind of rolled over. Yeah, I, I, I kept my long puts on in my... As I was scaling out of my TLC trade, just... You know, as a, I, I like to keep them on if the VIX is up. And, you know, the VIX was just kind of climbing all day. So as I was scaling out and hitting profit targets, I'm looking at the VIX and it's like, yeah, it's still going up. I'm just not going to close out any longs yet. Um, But now they're uh, about 20 minutes ago, they were like 10 cents still. So it just hasn't been big enough moves. And so I end up just closing them out for 10 cents. Yeah, just a bleeding. I just got filled in my last big tranche, but it's saying it can't find a price on the call side to qualify for. So only the put side entered, which is. Not what I want here. I, I've been waiting for this to just give us a really big down move, but it it really it hasn't. Not yet, anyway. Not yet. I uh, posted a little bit earlier. There's uh, there's some shifting going on in the Middle East. Israel has briefed Biden on the general goals of the planned attack on Iran's regime, but not on a not on specific targets. Yeah, with this price action, I just can't justify a five wide TLC trade. I tried that yesterday, got stopped out, and ended up being a red day. Just not very good consolidation. Just five wide. Figure out why Tat won't find my call side price. Looking at the options, there should be one that qualifies. It's kind of frustrating. I've only got the put side on in my last tranche. So if we flush and I get stopped on that, that's not going to feel good. So I'll hope for a bounce and try to close that one out. Oh, I did get 
ticked out of that. All right, so all I've got on is the Wugas. Wuga needs a little bounce. Things are just feeling heavy. Uh, yep, that's correct, Moel. Yeah, Nasdaq's getting close to being down 300. Little butt, buddy Rut holding up green. Banks must be, regional banks must be somewhat green. See on the green side for stocks. Lemonade is up seven percent. Rocket Mortgage up four. Roku's up three. Boeing's up two. Yeah, Bank of America, Wells Fargo are both green. Apple up one percent. JP Morgan also green. On the red side. Chinese stocks getting hit. NVIDIA down five. Oh, here we go. Now we're moving down. Pushed me out of a couple of put side tranches. On my Bix. Drug. Bright Minds Bioscience. Okay, they must have had some kind of FDA approval or something. Hey, ETH9090, are you on the live stream? I saw you posted in Chad's channel. We use the Zero Live Chat channel during our live streams here if you're on the stream. Going down. All my put sides have been stopped. Still, uh, still have a little profit on my Bix as long as we don't rip back up and stop my calls out.
Down we go. Yeah, it looks like I closed my puts maybe a little too early. See what they'd be worth now. Yeah, only 15 cents now. Is that just because you were you had a bearish assumption today, Elliot? Or was the premium still the same? Was the premium still even? I was looking at the update back test this weekend. They still look fine. They still look, they still continue to perform. Uh, the down days, I don't remember. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's good. That's a good question. I'll have to dig into that a little more. VIX up to 20.76. So you wait until the afternoon. So like your, your afternoon tranches, you'll flip it one way or another. Gotcha. A little flush and a little bounce. VIX isn't even above where we opened up yesterday.
my NDX Wuga needs above twenty thousand one fifty. Call it one twenty thousand one sixty. Um, it just depends, Moel. You know, as a as a general rule, and of course it depends on your duration and everything else, but they're they're positive Vega trades. So they typically benefit when implied volatility is increasing, but it all has to do with the differential of the implied volatility between the front and the back. We're selling the front, buying the back. So we want the front options to decay faster. So ideally, the implied volatility would contract faster in the in the front than it would the back. And if it doesn't, you know, that volatility can work against you. And then, of course, price needs to stay in your range as well. So they're a little, little tricky. It's not just up move, down move. It's not just IV expansion or contraction. It It has to do with the relationship between the the front and the back options. Uh, elections approaching, if, you know, like the volatility that we've seen lately has been awesome for calendars, which is just kind of staying steady to grinding higher. So if we get a, you know, kind of a gradual expansion in, in the VIX or like, or implied volatility going into the election, that would be good, most likely. The times that calendars don't perform well is when you get those long extended periods of implied volatility contraction. You know, like the first part of this year was not great. If you look at like this, this period here where volatility spiked up in April and then just kind of was pretty much going down all the way till July, my, my performance in my calendars during that period was not good. It was just, it's kind of back and forth. And really from August till now, it's just been great. Cause, cause we'll see times where, you know, on days when the S and P is going up, volatility will stay bid or just not contract as much. And again, it, it's all relative to the front and the back options that you've sold and bought against, but, um, that that's kind of the ideal conditions is just kind of sideways to grinding higher volatility. I was, so my performance, I posted in the calendar chat a while back. Let me see if I can, that was a while back. I'd have to search, but yeah, I was red during that April to July period. I can't find it. Oh, I'll have to I'd have to dig into my performance reports to do it, but um but yeah, from that April to July my calendars overall were red.
I thought we were going to get a little bounce there, but it didn't last long. Might. Sure didn't last long. Get in 10 wide right now, Chad. Yeah, I saw that. Eight point expected move. Let's go. Yeah, I saw that because it was like, eh, it's holding this premium pretty good. I might do a, a big tranche here. Could have done a late Wooga. Still gotten over $4. And it's holding its premium. Thing is, it's like, okay, we just had, let's see, four bars ago, it just dropped eight points in five minutes. Like, that'll stop you out of a five or ten wide. Yeah, I just got in a little two-lotter. Just yeah. for something to do. It's not a bad idea. Yeah, that zero DTE SPX, I've looked at that a few times. I haven't really figured out if there's anything that I would use on that, but it's interesting to kind of look at. Where that historical volatility versus IV is and all that. What do you what what is telling you that premium is jacked? From that chart, I'm looking at it. And the yellow is just VIX. Are you saying the uh yeah, I would I don't know what you're saying. So you're saying the the dark purple line has to get down here? Yeah, tell me tell me what you're trying to say. I don't I'm not following you, chess master. The dark purple is just the SPX expected move. All right, so it's at 9.43 it's saying. Or I guess that was the low. It's at 9. Point, yeah. 9 and a third. Yellow's VIX. The light purple dotted line is just the SPX historical expected move.
Yeah, I don't I'm not I still don't know what you're saying. And as as far as the reality of trading the way we do, obviously it's got to stay within the strikes that you choose as well. Couple little tiny green bars. Wow, my five seven was getting close to twenty percent earlier. Now it's only up ten. J trade moved to Belgium. Oh, for the army. <clears throat> well, glad you could come here, J trade. Glad to have you. Wow, I got stopped out on my call side. Yeah, that's low premiums, man. These moves. No bueno. Good news is my put side was for a bigger credit. So as long as it don't doesn't whip back down, still be profitable. But there's I'm not counting down, move out. Wuga needs to keep bouncing. Yeah, I, I guess my question, Chess Master, is how is that helpful? Like, if SPX bounces, if volatility contracts, we already know that. What else? What is that telling you in addition to that? Yeah, I guess my point is you can see the same thing looking at VIX. I mean, VIX is contracting. Usually VIX contracts when SPX bounces and vice versa.
Sam, it's the uh, channel right below this called Trade Plans. There's the link right to it. The My post at the very bottom is my trade plan sheet. Open up that sheet and you'll see the different trades. With, with the option Omega backtest links included, you'll need to... Just make sure you are signed in to Option Omega. You have to have Option Omega to be able to view those links. About 22 minutes until the bell. Fifteen butterflies trading for about a buck twenty. No, not that much. Probably buck buck oh five, buck ten, maybe. Well, if you can get direction right and price moves at least 10 points and you're buying, you know, something at the money, those can obviously uh, build some profits quickly, but.
main question is what's your what's your strategy for picking direction? Because they're going to bleed value or accelerate in value. Goes both ways. Yeah, the last day of the month, um, I like to I like to be I like to put on a trade, basically a rick, which will benefit from either direction because sometimes you'll get a big move down as well on the last day of the month. Something like that, Chess Master just posted. And we're heading back down to Lowe's. Short-lived little bounce. IBKR. I don't think their their options are very decent, are they? No, they don't even have weeklies. These are only five, ten, fifteen cents wide. How is that stock doing? Ooh, it's been on fire since. Early August. Wow. I guess that's what you get. You don't have to pay support people, right, Marl? <laughs> Straight to the bottom line. No, I don't think Mara's on here. SPX, new low of day. NDX, new lows of day. Wooga's going to need a late day rally. I don't think it's 2000, is it? Let's see what the deal is. Oh, a dollar, a dollar for every hundred dollars.
Um, I have to double check. I don't I actually don't know. It's a good question. Uh, chess master, if you're, if you're talking about the distance between the dark purple line and the, and the dotted, the difference between those is six, which is also the expected move. So that's, that's just saying the remaining expected move left. Plus or minus. It doesn't say anything about direction, though. No. Shouldn't tell you anything about direction. Oh, I'm holding my Wooga. I'm ride or die with Wooga. Need a big bounce, though. Yeah, I wasn't very confident in Wooga today. I only did half size, two contracts. Sorry, Chad, right when you started speaking, construction came on heavy. What'd you say? Well, saying I didn't have much, didn't have a lot of confidence. Confidence in the Wuga today. It's not, I only did a half size. Yeah, same here. A little, but it's it's really not babies. That, it's not that far off though, really, from break even. At least mine isn't. Mine is a little further than I'd like. NDX gets back above that little where it's peaked about 15 minutes ago. I'd be good. What happened? We need the bottom feeders to come in. Where are my bottom feeders at? Well, I was hoping to get out of half of my 5.7 today. It doesn't look like that's going to hit now. I will say, Moel, going back to your comment about um, you said uh, on calendars seem to hurt more from down moves than up moves. I will say recently with this, with the way volatility has been, um, up moves have, have definitely, you've seen a lot more profit come into the calendars. 
with the up moves and and reason being going back to the differential between the front and the back is because when the market's moving up and volatility starts contracting that that front that those short dated options the front dated options are just decaying much quicker whereas the longer dated are staying a little bit more bid so we've in this environment we've actually seen it where when we get up moves and vol contraction the calendars have done well you get the little volatility spikes it's actually suppressed them a little bit Fifty-eight fifteen is break even for my Wuga. You can probably see that a little bit if you've been in a zero DTE versus a one DTE. All right, here's a little bounce. Get some legs, buddy. Get some legs. Yeah, I'm almost back to break even. Another 30 points in NDX. We need to stop here. Let's keep going. The 10 butterfly trading for about a dollar 20. No. Dollar 30, dollar 40, maybe. 15 and a half minutes to go. Still getting a straddle here, Chad. Nice juicy straddle. I bet it is juicy. <laughs> Too juicy for me.
I got a feeling there's going to be a big bounce for Mahomes to make it a winner, and it's going to bring the Wugu right back to Max winner. I like it. Maybe a little MOC buy number. Yep. Man, my five seven. It's just kind of bled out. I was so close to twenty percent. All right, here comes a little bounce. Keep her going. Stay green, buddy. Stay green. One minute till MOC. All right. Time to start thinking about some Mahomes. One hundred and twenty two million sell side. So what we need SPX to think about is that oh, is it just too small of a sell number, so we need to just drift higher. See how I did that? Reverse psychology. Yeah, I just need above fifteen. And I'll be back in the profits. I'm working the 15s and 10s. Fifteen more points to break even in NDX.
15 butterfly trading for about a dollar 75 ish. Maybe not even quite there. Go, baby, go. Go, baby, go. NDX, pressing break even. Who wants the pin, I think? Who's looking for a pin? In the twenties, twenties are close to filling. Where? I'll stay up there. Close mine for about 50% profit, just under. Boom. Very nice. Getting a nibble on the 20s. Wow. And we're trading closer to 15. I filled on one contract on the 20s. Now I'm getting filled on the 15s. All right, filled on the 15s. So I'm canceling my 20s. All right, let's bounce back up. Back up above 20. Four minutes to go. Or we can go down and touch 10 and get locked and then bounce back up to 20. My bot filled on the 15s. Oh, yeah, I'm on the 15s as well. I had one lot filled on the 20s. My NDX Wuga still needs a little upside. Twenty. Anybody else get filled on the twenties? Man, I wish I would have hit the rest of those twenties. I'd be locked in, locked and loaded right now. Oh, 
Well, this little pullback is not helping the Wuga situation. But I am close to locking my Mahomes in. Need one more little push down. Push down and then lock it and bounce. Got two minutes. Two minute warning, Mahomes. Two minute warning. Mm, did not quite push quite down far enough. Below 12 would be a winner for Mahomes. One minute. Creeping back up to the 14s. And the X is rising for me. That's what I need. And the X is in range. All right, we're going to need a bounce. Need a push. Need a push up away from 15. Big push. Big bounce. Let's get above 17 at least. Or 18. 18. Above 18 would be. Oh, there's the bell. Oh, markdown. Not so good for Mahomes. 58.15.32. My NDX Wooga is going to be a little winner. Oh, markdown and NDX too. That was not a good markdown. I was looking for a mark up. So small winner, Wooga, Mahomes loser, my Bix. Let's see. My Bix ended up being four plus 469, even though every side had one stop out. So that's good. Uh, otherwise, that is a wrap, my friends. Live stream tomorrow. I think it's me. Yeah, I'll be streaming live in the morning for day trading at the open. And then we'll be back for power hour. Take care, everyone. Have a good night. Talk to you soon.